Well, June was another exciting month. This vlog has a little bit of everything in it, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Flip around once it started? No. Nothing! Nothing again! Don't embarrass me! I got nothing! Go get him, Roomba. So, Deepika and Shaima are here. We're hanging out, we're gonna have dinner. Rose is out and I'm telling them about my date last night. I... The one that, that Iman matched with someone on Bumble. Dead. Because yes. she thought he would be perfect for me. Get an Iman in your life. Yes, agreed. Get you an Iman. Get you an Iman. Iman. Be my friend too. <laughs> for real though. Dark human. Oh, put your vlog faces on. I'm in my happy place right now. I'm taking them to my favorite Indian restaurant. And not letting in me get chicken tikka. Apparently, I'm a basic Indian. I just want us to post, but it's okay. like, yeah, embarrassed. FML. Already? Really? Already? It's not even out yet. <laughs> Mm -mm. <laughs> but they're thinking it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So baby Maddie is finally here. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely pooping. Oh, definitely pooping. So if you guys remember from my last vlog, the baby shower I hosted, this is the sweet little angel we were waiting on. Anita found the Coke bottle yeah. with Maddie's name on it. The best thing is, she doesn't, doesn't, you don't have to explain it for the camera. You know what the best thing is? She doesn't believe me. It's like an hour, she's like. Literally exactly like that. Maddie Cakes, is that what happened? Is that what happened? Mind you, it's like this much of her head, so I'm expecting a head to be this big. And then all of a sudden, once she cleared that, it's like this big, and she's nine pounds, two ounces. Ooh, that's the jam right there. Seriously, I love the units. Really? Yeah. Here, rest in the middle. So thanks to every vlogger on the planet, I tried matcha for the first time, matcha latte, and now I'm hooked. So we just exited <laughs> some random part of the 101. Now I'm looking for like, there's no matcha anywhere. Not one coffee shop, really? We're just Handmaid's Tale colony workers right now in these robes. I didn't vlog too much of this quick trip because I just wanted to spend time with my friends, but it was much needed and I just felt so refreshed after. So I'm going to start out with my pretty much go-to base product lately, the Ulla Henriksen um, Sea Rush Brightening Cream. This is like that pick-me-up that just wakes up my skin in the morning. This just gives me the perfect base for makeup, no matter what I'm putting on. You guys, I'm obsessed with this. This is like something newer that I'm using. I just started using it and it's like a miracle product. It's not a foundation. It's just like, it's called the Hollywood Flawless Filter. Um, in the color tan um, number five but I love that it comes with this doe foot applicator and I could just like dot it around my face really easy and fast
And see, I don't even put on that much. I bet if you put on more, it would be even more glowy. But this is like a dream come true for a base. It's just, you could tell it's just a really glowy, luminous base. It's not a lot of coverage. It's kind of like just a tint. But you guys, I'm obsessed with this. So next up, I'm going in with the Body Shop Concealer. I've been really loving this. It's called their Matte Clay Full Cover Concealer. But I just take my finger and warm it up and just start dabbing this under my eyes. It's a really good opaque concealer, but it's like not, um, it's early. I don't know. I can't find the words. <laughs> It's not super noticeable. But this is really just like the perfect concealer if you're doing a minimalist look like I'm doing right now. Really, it's just a little bit of concealer and a little bit of glow, eyebrows out the door. But I'm not done. So these are the Cloud Paint Cream Blush by Glossier. You guys, I love, love this stuff. This is kind of turning into like a favorites video, but um, I take a little bit of dusk and a little bit really goes a long way. And then a little bit of puff. I mean, I'm really not using much at all. I just mix the two. And then just dab on my cheeks. And start patting that in. And then I'm taking the Sephora Collection Radiant Luminizing Drops. Oops, I took too much. And again, just with this on the back of my hand. I cannot wait to wax these. I have been growing out my eyebrows for so long. There, look at this. I even plucked them like a little bit, like the strays down here last week because it was like out of control, but I wanna wax them for the vlog. I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. The unibrow too, the unibrow I've been uh, been plucking. That's not cute, you gotta, you gotta leave that out. Good morning, I like your office. Yes. <gasps> nice. You wanna forward an Instagram to who? Jade Sherman. No. You've encouraged me to vlog, I therefore know. you are you going to be in my vlogs. You can post without me in it. I'm so proud of you. Right? Jade just said my skin looks so good. Yeah. It's that glow product, I'm telling ya. All right, so this is the box of the, the hot wax that I use. Clearly, I don't take very good care of it, but it's by a company called Gigi, and it's just like a very traditional um, like wax heater unit, and then you can put whatever kind of wax you want. I use the all-purpose honey, always. And then to apply, I always use these little guys. They, they also have the bigger popsicle stick style, but because it's eyebrows, I use the smaller fine applicators. So I plugged it in, the wax is heating up right now. I just cannot even begin to express how excited I am to finally wax these brows. It takes a while. It really takes a long time for them to grow out to the point where it's like wax ready. So meanwhile, the other tools I'm gonna have handy for this are just like a spoolie, so I can brush out my brows and kind of place them how I want before I decide what parts I'm gonna wax. And then also a small pair of scissors, and these I'll just use to cut off the excess. Cause I, I like to, you guys have seen, I really like push up my brows like this, so they stand up nice and tall. I don't need them going beyond <laughs> like where my actual brow is. So I'll just cut whatever's too long. They sell smaller pieces, like the little strips, but I ran out of them, so I just take one, the bigger strips, one or two of them, and just cut them into smaller strips so then I can use them for my eyebrows. All right, you guys, this wax is hot and ready. So I'm gonna start with the under area right here. Again, I'm taking this little guy. Uh, there's two sides. There's like a really sharp side and then this side. I'm gonna use this more flat side to grab some wax, that, which is nice and liquidy now that it's hot. And I'm just gonna Make a straight line going across the under part of my brow. And the wax is covering basically everything that I want to rip off. 
I'm not going too far up because I don't want it to touch um, any part of the brow that I want to keep. These stragglers out here. I'm gonna take a piece of the cloth, put this over, and just start reinforcing the cloth over the wax. You don't have to press too hard. The wax itself kind of hardens and like sticks to the cloth. Now when you pull it off, you want to pull it in the direction that's against the hair growth and you want to keep it, you don't want to pull it up like that, you want to keep it as close to your face as possible. It's gonna hurt. All right, so that's what I got off <laughs> with my first run. It's funny, it's almost the exact shape of my eyebrow. <laughs> the other part that's important for me to wax, and you're probably not gonna be able to see this, you could only really see it in like a high def photo, but I have a lot of little guys above here that are like still kind of connected to my brow area, but I don't want them to be there because it messes with the shape. So that's the next thing I'm gonna do. Again, I'm gonna take that same little guy Grab some hot wax. And this is like, I can stand it. It's not too hot. Taking all those little stragglers but not getting too close to the brow. But when I get to my arch, I do get a little bit closer to the brow because sometimes my arch gets like too archy and then I look mad all the time. Take another piece. Place it over. Just kind of like gently rub over it so that it sticks. And then you can see a little bit of it, but most of it is kind of like, just like little, like almost peach fuzzy hairs. And then do have a pair of tweezers in handy just in case the wax misses couple of hairs. I'm really annoyed because the last time I did this I accidentally took too much off of here and it hasn't grown back so I'm still waiting. Still just filling it in. So now I'm going to brush up all the hairs and then anything that's too, and mostly just in the front area, and anything that's too long I'm just going to trim. onto the unibrow. <laughs> I definitely have to wax this because I have black hair and very strong hair genes. So I definitely get these guys in the middle here. And you don't wanna like lay it down too thick. Should be a pretty thin layer. Whoa! <laughs> All of that was in between my eyebrows. <laughs> also, I just wanna say like, people ask me to do this on camera so they could see how I do it. I've been doing this for a long time. I've done the whole trial and error. If you have someone that does, I, I don't let anyone touch my brows. Just, it's a no, I do my own brows and I have for years. But if you have someone that does your brows, don't try this at home, don't change your routine for any reason because you might mess it up. Unless you've done this a lot at home, don't all of a sudden like try it because that's gonna be my fault <laughs> if I hadn't plucked some of those strays last week you guys this would have been like full <laughs> full of hair the whole point though for me is to keep them as thick as possible but with my desired shape that's the reason I don't allow anyone to do my eyebrows is because I have such a specific idea for what I want in mind for my brow shape I like my brows to soften my face by being a little bit thicker and more a little more straight not straight but definitely a much softer arch so i just want to show you guys with a little bit of light filling how it looks so i fill it in mostly for this like empty spot here and a little bit up here but mostly just to make them look a little bit more symmetrical it's just a little more matching but god it looks so much cleaner now <laughs> i feel like a brand new woman when i wax my eyebrows so how about I'm organizing my entire vanity, purging a bunch of products, trying to get organized, and I just decided, you know, 
want to sit down and create a makeup look. I was like, oh, I've never seen this color. Oh, I've never seen this color. And like, oh, this is pretty. So this is the current situation I'm dealing with. This is embarrassing. <laughs> this is just no way to live. But I mean, I guess since I've started a makeup look, I might as well just like finish it and try out all these other goodies. I can't get a moment's peace with this dog. Can you just look at this attempt at a selfie? <laughs> all right, so we went from playing with colors to a full beat. My whole face is done now. This stupid fan in my bathroom is on all the time. It's automatic, so I can't like turn it off. It bugs the hell out of me. It's so noisy. Anyway, I have nowhere to go, so I'm gonna take this makeup off. <laughs> this was actually a good colorful look. I enjoyed this. So if you guys saw my uh, nighttime routine video from, has to be like a little over a year now, a year ago, more than a year ago. You will remember that this is my favorite product for taking makeup off the Clinique Take the Day Off Balm. I mentioned before that there's also like a liquid oil version of it, but this is a solid balm that turns into an oil. And I only like to take off makeup using things like this, like an oil, just because it makes, especially for like mascara, it's not harsh on the eyes. It makes the mascara just like slip right off and it actually conditions your lashes and helps them not to fall out so much. So this is my go-to. I've gone through, even though I don't wear makeup that much, this is probably my third jar. This will actually work for my whole face. You don't need a whole lot, but the minute it gets into your hands, it kind of starts to um, change from a solid to an oil. I'm just gonna hit your head. And at this point, it's com like completely an oil. And then I'm just gonna go over my eyes. And then once I get to my lashes, I just really gently start to work it in between my lashes. Just this motion is helping the oil get in between and getting that mascara off. And then if I have anything on my lips, I'll do that last just because I don't want lip, lip gloss or anything matte lipstick on my eyes. I don't want to transfer that to my eye area. So really you're just massaging this into your face, into the lashes. And then once you start adding water, it starts to emulsify a little bit. All right, so now I'm gonna turn the water on. And I, I like to wait for the water to get pretty hot because I feel like it helps to melt the oil away. So that was just one pass. Like I didn't go back and have to do a second round. And look, there's no mascara, nothing um, on my towel. It, like I said, the oil, because it's an oil, it starts as a solid but turns into an oil. It just helps the mascara to slip off. That's the hardest part to take off um, for makeup but it just slips off because oil just breaks it down so much better than, like I would never use like, like a soap, anything sudsy, anything that foams to take off eye makeup especially. Maybe like my face, but definitely not eye makeup. So here's a look at it again. It's called the Clinique Take the Day Off Balm. Just a really good, and I think I've said this before, I hardly ever repurchase or like restock up on Cleansers for some reason. I'm always trying different cleansers, but this is one that I've just like I said I've stocked up at least twice already and then my skin after especially because I'm on the dry side it just feels Like moisturized even though it's clean now. It still feels very just Just like supple also am I the only one that has to blow my nose after I wash my face like without fail every time I wash my face I have to blow my nose it feels like there's like water in it <laughs> or wet boogies. So we're headed back home. We just left our hotel in Ojai and my friends are dropping me off at ColourPop for a meeting. Getting right back into it. 
So the ColourPop headquarters actually weren't that far from Ojai and it was on the way home. So my friends just dropped me off and I Ubered home. Oh, there go my friends. <laughs> Okay, so you guys, I made it into ColourPop headquarters. I'm in their lab right now. <laughs> my ponytail is just like stuck in here. Oh my God, is it trying to get out? It's trying to get out. <laughs> is that lined up? Mm -hmm. Oh wait, a little less. That's fine, that's fine. Yeah. Obviously, I'm an idiot. I touched it. Like, you're not supposed <laughs> to touch the <laughs> heading into Target to see my Maybelline display for the first time. It's been out for like a couple months and I'm just now seeing it. It's so crazy to see my face in one of the biggest stores. Thank you to everyone who sent me pictures on social media from all over the country with it and being excited for me. It just, it means a lot to me. Healthy with it. Uh-huh, yes, true. <laughs> So this woman standing next to the display, she saw me recording and she's like, oh, are you doing the same thing? Like, like I'm taking pictures of the, of the products I like. I go, no, that's actually me there. And she looks at the picture. She's like, oh my gosh, it is you. She brought her husband over. They introduced themselves. They were like, this is so cool. <laughs> they were so sweet. I love meeting people like that and just like having a random fun, positive conversation. They were just so excited for me. <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? <laughs> so I told you guys I want to vlog more, which I am, more than before. <laughs> Not a lot, but more than before. But um, part of what I wanted to show you guys, and I think a lot of you from the feedback were excited to see just more of like the business side of what goes on with like digital and YouTube. Um, so as much as I can, I want to like show you guys um, what goes on within reason because obviously some stuff is like companies don't want to, you know, like expose too much. Um, so which is reasonable, obviously. But I'm just going to show you like a little bit of what I'm working on right now, whatever I can show you and just show you a different side of like how influencer marketing works. And you may have a different idea of what it looks like. Um, but the way I work is just... It's a little bit more outside the box because it's it's like, you know, I do I do proposals to brands too. It's not just the brands coming to me and saying, "Hey, we have this product that, you know, we want you to help us promote. Try it out, see if you like it." Um, there are a lot of instances where I really like a brand, so I'll go to them or my agent and I will go to them and say, "Hey, listen, we'd love to work with you." I'm a big fan of the brand um, and then we'll show them like a proposal and they'll either you know pass on it or they'll they'll accept it so I'm actually gonna show you one that I am working on right now this was a proposal to Guerlain which is one of my one of my like classic favorites but I'm gonna show you the proposal I created and they actually ended up really liking it so now I have to work on it and like produce it <laughs> So we started talking to the brand and um, sort of got an idea of what their goals were and I shared what my goals are and what I am looking to do. So basically this is like, this is almost like not really storyboarding, but giving them an idea of what the video that I am envisioning is going to look like. So for example, for this color combination of the lipstick, this is kind of the scene that I'm going to shoot it in with like pink, a pink background, pink balloons. And then for this one, it's uh, obviously these are like darker colors here. Obviously the scene is like much more dark and like gothic almost. And then for the next one, this is like kind of like an ethereal sort of angelic vibe for these colors. So this was like obviously a very short and like not very detailed proposal, but this just kind of gave them an idea of what I'm looking to do with this particular video. Um, and this is a video that they're actually going to use for their own like purposes. Obviously I'll share it on social media, but this isn't the kind of thing that would be like a YouTube video. 
Visuals are always really important because it gives everybody a clear idea of what a potential project would look like. And especially if you know, you're talking to more of a corporate team and not a creative team, it helps to, you know, really spell everything out for them and make sure they understand what aesthetically it's going to look like. So that's just one example of a, like a deck or a proposal, but I'm working on another one right now that's like 10 pages long and has, it's very detailed. Sometimes, um, th because this one, this next one that I'm, I can't show you just because it's like, it's not approved. We're not moving forward yet. It's very early stages, but Sometimes brands will want to see like how many impressions is this certain project going to get like projected impressions and like you have to show them those numbers so that they can get an idea of what kind of return they're going to get from a partnership because obviously they're spending money on it. This one I, I wish I could show you it's so exciting and I really really hope it happens. It's me, the proposal is I'm, pro I'm proposing me and three other influencers. It's just gonna be, if they say yes to this, and I, I can't say the brand either, but if they say yes to it, it's gonna be very cool. Probably the coolest influencer project ever. So like I said, I just wanted to show you another facet of how all of this works. It's not just, hey, we have a product launch, here's the contract, here's your deliverables, call it a day. Um, sometimes, like I said, the idea comes from us. Not everybody does this, but um, I just think that, you know, when you have certain ideas that you think would work really well for a brand, why not take it to them? And obviously you want to package it in a really professional way so that it's not like, it's not sloppy, it's not unprofessional, it's something that they're sort of used to seeing um, in their sort of corporate world. So that's how my month went. I hope you guys had a great June and I hope you enjoy the rest of your summer. Catch you in my next video.